You ever been in a conversation and someone says to you, so tell me a little about yourself. And uh, the facetious response, well, I was born at a very early age. Is that the beginning of your story? Say, well, no, actually, I mean, normally when we start telling our story, it's like, well, my childhood and so on. Nobody says, well, let me begin by telling you how I was conceived in the womb. And yet, is that really the first chapter of our lives? No, it isn't. I mean, if I were really going to begin to tell my story, I might have to go back to my parents. And my father was born in Scotland and ended up in the Royal Air Force and came to Canada to go to training and how my father met my grandfather, my mother's father, because he used to come down to the barracks and call out, does anybody here love the Lord Jesus? And whoever responded positively, he'd take them home and look after them and write to their mothers back in the old country and say, you know, I, I've met your son here and I'm looking after him and encouraging him spiritually. So, you know, but was that enough? Should I go back to my grandparents and talk about them and, and how they ended up being driven out of the fishing grounds by the the trawlers in the North Sea and ended up coming in the 1800s to Canada. And, and then, you know, is that far enough? Do I have to go back to some of the earlier days? This isn't speculation, of course. You remember how the Lord said to Jeremiah in chapter 1 and verse 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. When we open the New Testament, and we're going to read the story of Jesus, how does it begin? Well, it takes us way back to Abraham, because that was an important part of the story, that, that when God provided his lamb, as Abraham said, God will provide a lamb, he was going to be a son of Abraham. And of course, then we go further back and discover in Luke's gospel, we go back to Adam, say, actually, <laughs> his story begins with Adam. And then John says, wait a minute. Actually, his story doesn't begin. It, it's before the beginning, way back before the beginning of the creation, he was there. And so where does your story begin? It's kind of hard to say, isn't it? Because there were generations before you that you carry their life. There's this stream of life, and you stepped into time at a certain point, but you're connected very much to your history and where you came from. And so it's all very interesting, but I think sometimes we, we see ourselves as beginning at a moment in time when, in reality, the tapestry of life has these threads that run into our life. And and how our life is going to influence our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren down through time. It's certainly true, both negatively and positively. We recognize that we are part of this fabric that runs through history. I was made very aware of this on one occasion. I was visiting in New Jersey and um, had the opportunity of meeting a man who was in visiting that day. And he was with a friend of mine, and we sat down, and he told me his story, how he actually had been converted in prison. He was, he was full of anger, had a very unhappy family life, and uh, resented this very difficult life he'd had as a child, grew up with a chip on his shoulder, used to pick fights with people, and one thing led to another, he ended up going to prison. One day he realized, I'm not going to come out of here alive, because he was always picking fights, always ending up being separated from the other prisoners, and he knew that eventually he'd end up being killed there. And he saw another prisoner walking down the hall with a Bible under his arm, and he said to the guy, hey, does that help you? And the, the fellow said, I'm going to a Bible study, come on with me. He ended up hearing the gospel and uh, putting his trust in the Lord. Started having Bible studies with some Christians who were coming in from a, a local church that sought to follow the New Testament pattern, uh, gathering simply around the Lord. And uh, he was so impressed with this that they just followed what they saw in the book of Acts and in the epistles. 
there was the possibility of parole. They said to him, you know, there's a mission run by people like us in New York, Yonkers, New York. And if you sign up for that, you may be able to qualify for release. And it would be good for you spiritually to, to be there. So he did. And uh, the director at that time of the Yonkers mission, he looked at it and he thought to himself, I get lots of these, you know. It looks good on your parole application if you're going to go and get involved in a religious thing. And maybe that was the case. But what do you know? He was given release and he showed up. And so they're walking around the facility and um, my friend is explaining the situation to him. And he said, actually, we have a local church right here that meets and uh, you'd be welcome to come along. And he said, well, actually, I'm looking for a special kind of church. Uh, they don't um, don't necessarily have a paid pastor. The, the men of the church ask the Lord to show them who's been gifted to do the teaching. And it's kind of a different thing. It's kind of like the book of Acts. And, and he said, well, that's how we meet. And he said, well, yeah, I know everybody thinks they do. But, but I, anyway, it turns out, yes, that this group that had led him to Christ and the Bible studies he'd used, the Emmaus correspondence courses, they, they were all the result of these groups of believers that were seeking to follow in a simple way the teaching of the New Testament and not adding to it a lot of things that have sort of grown up in Christianity over time. And so he, he was so happy to be in the fellowship there. Well, one day the director was invited to go and speak at a, a nearby local church similar to the one that they had, and so he took this fellow along. And afterwards, there was an old lady who came up to him and and was kind of peering at him and, and said, did, "Did you um, did you grow up in the area here?" And he said, "Well, yes, I did. This was this is my old stomping ground around here." I said, "Well." Um, did you ever come here to the Sunday school? He said, you know, you know, I did. This, this was the place when I was a little boy. Somebody brought me along here for a while. And she said, you know, I think, I think I met you then. She, she asked him his name. And when he told her his name, she said, young man, I've been praying for you ever since you were a little boy here in Sunday school. And those prayers had followed him in, in reaching his conscience and stirring him up with a spiritual interest and putting him into contact with these believers. She didn't know anything about this. And here they were, these believers had loved him to Christ and then how he'd been saved and using these Emmaus courses and then coming to the Yonkers mission and then ending up back here and, and sitting down with this little group of Christians and meeting this old lady who had been praying for him and for his salvation ever since he was a little child. He knew nothing about that. And there are lots of stories like this. One of the great things about heaven is we're going to be able to fill in the blanks. We're going to be able to see how God had been working in history. He'd been working before we were born. Paul says, I, I discovered this. Like, whoa. God had been working in my life before I knew anything about him. God was working and preparing the way. What a wonderful God he is. So your story and my story, if we go back far enough, we'll discover that they actually began in the heart of God. Way back before the world began, we were on his heart. David says, my members were written in your book. God designed you. He put you together. He wrote your DNA. And he was working in history, working along. And when we all of a sudden realize, whoa, this is wonderful, but we have no idea that perhaps someone in our past was moved by the Spirit of God to begin to pray for us. We don't even know this. We haven't even met these people yet. And God was working accomplishing his purpose. And like Jeremiah, the Lord can say, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And God has been working. So how thankful we ought to be 
that the God who is, is the God who writes the story. And I'm part of this amazing tapestry. And I look back generations, perhaps. Not everybody can do that. But we can look back. Eventually, we'll see that God's story was written long before we were born. God had been working. And he's still working. And he wants to use us in the generations that come. So God help us to embrace this idea and realize what a wonderful storyteller the Lord is. And may the Lord bless us richly as we praise him for his gracious ways and the wonderful means by which he tells our story and we discover that we've been on his heart right from the beginning.